Hello, this is Atuba and Gloria George, and we are so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, let's call forth our daily bread. Praise God. Listen, as we are declaring these words, miracles are taking place in your life. And as they happen, we would like to hear from you. We would like to hear from you. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Say this with us. Say, Father. Father. I demand right now, I demand right now and, I and I receive my daily bread. My daily bread. It's, coming to me now, it's coming to me now in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now we are still talking about family matters. Yes. And listen, take these words seriously. Let me tell you what, 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 what's going on here. Because sometimes people feel, oh, if you want to teach, tell me three steps or tell me four points now people get their heads filled with steps Step, yeah. and points mm. and at the end of the day it makes no sense to them it, it, it doesn't change their lives why because they are struggling to keep those steps they don't have foundation on which those but, steps can lie but you see as we discuss these things and then we are bringing up truth mm. jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So we bring truth about all this. Everything we raise up here, we try to bring the truth concerning it. Now, as you are listening, something is going on inside you. You don't realize it. You don't realize it. Until the day you want to go back to what you used to do before, then the truth stands before you. and said, you know better now. Choose it. Now that's where decision will be demanded from you. of you. But like we said, it is still going to be by your decision. Praise <laughs> God. It's going to be by your decision. I received a message from someone one day. She's been having these issues with her husband. And she said to me, now these are real issues, not not she she's not crazy. Okay. I mean, when you when you look at the situation, I mean they are they are they are not so good. So she is considering walking away from the marriage. So I received this message from hand. The moment I saw the message, the word of the Lord came to me concerning her. You know, like you're reading something and then you're getting a response immediately, immediately concerning what you're reading. Mm. And a lot said, she wants to take the same step that her parents took. And then a lot said this to me. I wonder how people survive without the Holy Spirit. I just wonder how people survive. Because he is the, Jesus said, he will guide you into all truth. How? How do you live without such a person? It's not enough to say, I have the Holy Ghost, to speak in tongues, to speak in tongues. Mm. This is where the Holy Ghost comes in. Yes. This, this is where the proof of his, the Holy Spirit in your life, comes it's in. evident. Now, you, you, you are looking at something and then you begin to hear another voice telling you something else. And, and I saw that message and the Lord said, this is exactly going to repeat what her parents did. And the Lord said this to me. If she doesn't take charge, she is setting up her children for failure. And that is not good. Because the Bible says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Now, when you are making a wrong decision, and that this, this is the part that got me. The Lord said to me, he was talking to me. I mean, all this from that message I was reading. He said to me, he said, 
life will throw a lot of situations, many times not pleasant. Yeah. But your decision is your responsibility. Yes. Now, whatever decision you take, the Spirit of God will help you keep it. So even though the situation looks bad, if she takes the decision, look, I'm not going to make the same decision my parents made when things got difficult for them. I'm going to stand in faith. Now, the moment she makes, if that is her decision, the Spirit of God will now begin to bring forth all the wisdom that is needed to keep her there. Yeah. So whatever, it's, whatever happens is not going to be as a result of what has happened before. But it's going to be as a result of okay, her now. decision. The decision, the decision yeah. that you're taking. You know, we we're talking about something yesterday. The wisdom that comes from above. From, from James chapter 3 says, If you have bitter envy in your heart. That's why you should be you should be um, concerned about who gives you counsel. Because sometimes it's easy for us to get emotional. Oh, my husband did this. Oh, my husband did that. Oh, my husband did. And you're looking at it. You, you, I mean, the person is not telling a lie. Yeah. You're looking at, how can somebody do this? How can someone reason like this? How can someone treat someone else like this? And, and you want to just say, man, what are you still doing in that marriage? <laughs> but it takes the wisdom of God. The God who knows the future. To let you know that you are all this quagmire, all these things are, are surrounding you to push you to make a bad decision. You were saying something to me about Deuteronomy chapter 30. And God placing life and death. And death. That's, that's what he said. I place before you Deuteronomy 30 and verse 20. 29 there above. This can you read it? Says, Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both you thou and thy seed may live. The decision is always before you. Blessing, cost, life, death. Now, whatever baggage is behind you, is behind you. But you come to the place of decision. It's your decision. You are the one that is going to take the choice. Mm -hmm. You are the one that is going to say, I've suffered enough. You know what? I take the easy way out. I choose death. Mm -hmm. You are the one that is going to come and say, you know what? I choose life. Now, how do you know what life is? Life is the word of God. Because Jesus, the words that I speak unto you, they are, they are spirit, spirit and yeah. they are life. So when God says, I choose life, you know, someone say, look, you know what? I need my sanity. So, I, I, I choose to leave. Now, now, I'm not saying there are no situations at all that God will not tell you, tell you to, leave. to get out of that marriage. To be God. You will know that you're responding to, to His God. word. Yes. But the problem with a lot of people is they are not even willing to ask the Lord. They are not willing to ask Him. They don't want to hear. You know why they don't want to hear? Because it has been wrongly communicated to them. You know, for example, when when we say God hates divorce. Now, does God hate divorce? Yes, He hates divorce. So, does that mean that I should be in the place until I'm killed? No, He loves you to leave. Yes. If He loves you to leave, and then He hates divorce, and then, but you are in a marriage that is about to kill you. Now, people just have this mentality that when they go before God, God says, my daughter, don't even go there. I hate divorce. So don't even go there. Now, when the Bible says God hates divorce, what he actually saying, what, what, what the word of God is communicating, is that God takes divorce seriously. He doesn't treat it like it. Now, you know what that means? Anyone who's responsible for that divorce, God is going to look into that matter and deal with it everyone according so 
a man because the scripture says God hates divorce doesn't that give a man the right to be maltreating his wife, his wife? and say after all she cannot leave when you eh, I'm tired I don't know I can't handle anything I go now she the Bible say God hates divorce now you <laughs> now it, but is it in such a case if she brings it before the Lord in all sincerity, taking out bitterness okay. and envy, so that strife, self-seeking, taking those things out, out of her heart. Now, you know, you come before God, God, this, 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 my husband is wicked. God, this, my wife is too wicked. Lord, ah, you have to deal with her. There is strife in your heart. And I will tell you what, he won't speak to you. He won't speak to you. So what do I do? First of all, clear your heart from those things. You need to cleanse your heart first. So maybe you take a fast. And when you take a fast, don't father this three days fast. You will punish my husband. He has dealt with me so much. No, no. When you take that fast, you go before the Lord and, and, and begin to remember where you're coming from. Exactly. You begin to remember how, how did I even get into this marriage in the first place? Did I hear the voice of God? Do that self-examination. Take the, take, the, take the other spouse. Take out. the spouse out mm -hmm. of this situation. Look at you. This is me and my father. Did I go into this marriage by the word of God first and foremost? Was this the will of God for me first and foremost? Now, if you cannot place in all sincerity, I'm not talking about you telling yourself, eh. no, try to remember. Try to remember. At the point you entered that marriage, did you think you were following the will of God? Now, someone can say, I actually pray that I felt peace in my heart. Now that's something good. That's something good. Yeah. You may not have heard a word, you know, like some of us, you know, who can tell you God spoke to me or God showed me a vision or you understand. So, you know, some, some just say, well, I, things just played out and I felt it was right. Did you pray about it? Yes, I prayed. In fact, there was time I prayed. I said, God, if you're not, if he's not the one taking me away, but in fact, the, his love now grew stronger. So that's how I felt. Now, you see, whatever you felt that was right. right. It's different if, for example, and, and you have to be honest with yourself. Yes. If, if, for example, the situation was like, I saw that this guy had money and I told myself that, ah, I better hold him tight so that I will enjoy his money. You were self-seeking. You were self-seeking. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, even that still doesn't mean, say, eh, it was a wrong foundation, so I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. Listen, if that was totally wrong for you god had a way of stopping it yes. he could have stopped it the fact that he allowed you to get to this point means that he still has the ability to fix it yes but the question is are you willing to yield to him to fix it so now having realized where you came from where you started from yeah. now okay lord this is where i I sincerely need your yeah. help. Not, oh God, fix my husband so that he will love me properly. Mm -hmm. No, Lord, I need your help. If you were to convince in your heart that you married by the word of God, mm -hmm. fine. But now this, this everything has turned sour. God, I need your help right now. I need your help on how to be a good wife to a loving husband. I need your help on how to be a loving husband to a good wife. That was the vision I had in my heart when I was getting married. Now you bring these things before the Lord. And then the wisdom of God, because you've dealt with bitter end. You've dealt with strife. You're not there, oh Father. Can you imagine? Two weeks ago, he took away my car, the car he bought for me because he bought it for me. Now I'm taking taxi. Father, what kind of wickedness is this? No. Take all those things out. This is you 
and your father. Tell him, Lord, fix me. And when the Lord, because he sees your heart, he will begin to release wisdom. And that wisdom, he said it. Let's, let's look at that, James. James. Let's look at this quickly. Nana Kaba Oshi, right there. Three. Three, verse 17. Okay. It says, but the wisdom that, that is, is from, from above, above is first pure. pure. So you'll be amazed and, and, and the Lord will say, forgive him. Forgive him. Wow, he's the one. Forgive him. Or sometimes, oh, our time, time is up. So <laughs> Listen, we're going to continue from here, from here tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. So we don't lose track of, yes. of these things. Praise God. Listen, open your heart and let God bless you. Let God heal you. Let God work a miracle in your life. It's possible. It is. Things can't change. Yes. We'll see you tomorrow. Until then, God, God bless, bless you. you. Bye.